Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Professor Sistrunk and I'm reaching out to my students. This video log is going to be a little different than the other video logs. Remember, we're getting you prepared to do some cyber ops, studying, learning, and preparing yourself to go out into the world and get a job in the field. Hopefully, that's what the, that's the path you want. But just recently, I was asked a question from my student or one of my students about the industry and how much do they need to study to become quote unquote an expert in this field. Now that's an interesting, being able to become an expert in anything, we already know it takes time. But what the student was really trying to figure out is how much time do they have to put in daily to be able to conquer this discipline, to be better at it. And I wanna go into some things right now that you should know about your industry and give you a heads up on things you may be doing or you may not be doing, but things you really should know about any industry, especially the IT industry. If you know the IT industry has many different disciplines in it, you can be a programmer, don't tell programmers I said that, they might get upset. You can be a system administrator, you can be a network administrator, you can be an architect, you can be many different things in the IT industry, or you can wear all of those different hats. One thing that's dynamic about cyber ops or cyber security is that you have to dip your toe into the pond of all those different disciplines because you have to know some about each one of them. You don't have to be an expert in it, but you have to know something about it. Now, as you can see, this platform that I'm talking about today is Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Associate. What do you really know about that? Have you really looked it up? Or are you just taking a class because you just want to get a grade in something? Or are you a person sitting at home who just want to know about cybersecurity so you can potentially go off in the field? But it's things you need to know. The first thing you need to know that this certification has changed. You only have to take one certification. You can study this course by watching YouTube videos, taking a class in college, whatever, what not. But at the end of the day, to actually certify yourself in Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Associate, you have to take one certification, okay? And as you can see right here, here's the certification. Now, in the description, it says it's between 60 to 70 questions on the test. It says you get X amount of time and all this type of stuff. But in reality, the test may be different. You may get 100 questions on the test. Remember, these tests are adapted. The better you are at it, the less you have to worry about the test. But you got to know your stuff taking these tests. Another thing you don't know is that this is a... The prerequisite to this test is you don't really need to know anything. But is that smart? Would you go with that? No! You definitely have to know some things to actually sit for this particular certification. You can study this, you can pass the test, but when you go out into employment, they're going to expect you to know many different things. So Cisco say there are no formal prerequisites for Cisco cyber ops associate certification but we but you should have an understanding of the exam topics before taking it the test so you should know the exam topics and as you can see by i'm clicking on this you can see that these exam topics can get really deep the objectives that you need to know the prerequisite the outline it's a lot of stuff that you need to know one of the things I tell people about this cyber ops course is that you should know something about networking. You should know something about programming. You should know something about um, systems. These are the core things that you should have something in. That means you should have taken a class, learning about networks. You should be taking classes that 
will teach you something about networks, something about systems, and also something about programming. Yes, even if the program is just learning how to script, that's just a mini program, but you still should know something about that. Now, Cisco has put a plethora of information out there, but what the student was really asking me, how much time should I spend learning this stuff? Now, there is a Chinese proverb out there, and I like to say proverb, but it really is a saying that an individual, and I'm gonna pull this over here, in Chinese business, they have where a person has the 996, and a lot of my students often hear me speak of this, where you work from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and you do this for six days per week and you take one day off. Now, some people say, man, this is crazy. No, no, not work that much and all that. But starting off in your career, you really have to put some qualified time in. Meaning you have to go in and study like you never studied before. If that's me, I'm not saying that's you, but that's me. I really to, I really wanted to have the knowledge and the talent and skill, and it's taking care of me today. So I did the right thing. So whatever you may think of this here, a lot of students in China, China has adapted this. Now I'm not from China, so I couldn't tell you which students they are, but a lot of students have adapted this. They wanna spend nine hours a day. You wake up nine o'clock in the morning, study from nine o'clock to nine. Um, now, I know for a fact I studied way more, way longer than that. You know, I did put in more time than that, but I really, really wanted to really know my discipline. So now that, what that really means for you is for you to take the time to develop a real solid studying habit. You can jump in this class and you can do all the laughs and you can be perfect and getting all the A's and all that. But when you go in the industry, you better believe we're going to test you and test you and test you. You will not get in unless we try you out. So that student who asked me that question, I told the student, I say, listen, spend five hours a day, seven days a week studying. After your five hours a day, celebrate the rest of the day by doing whatever you want, but put your five hours in. You competing against people in the world who know their stuff. So you should put your hours in. Now, Cisco has laid out a platform on where you can really get the basic skills and the knowledge you need. We have the CCNA program. That's the fundamental of networking. That's really basic. Then you in the cyber ops. Most of my students already did the CCNA program and now they're in the cyber ops. And then it's another program out there that can teach you how to program called DevNet. Hopefully I'm gonna bring that to this college too, DevNet. But we really want you to be well-rounded so when you go in the industry, you prepare. A lot of you don't understand. Yes, this here prepares you for the job that you really want to do. If you want to be in the cyber ops industry, this will prepare you for it. Cisco has built a solid platform for you to go from point A to point Z and knock it out the park. But you have to put the work in. Just doing labs and not really understanding the labs. A student came to me and said, Professor, I did the lab, I got straight A's. I said, go do it again. What? Go do it again. Do that lab until you can memorize it. So when you walk in front of a hiring manager, you don't have a problem with understanding the question that they ask you. A lot of students don't want to do that. Sorry, but they don't. So this here platform, and I'm going to share that, this link with you in the uh, notes. This here tells you how to get started. Okay, what do you really want to work on? Do you want to go into networking? It breaks down the various things you have to do. Understanding the terminology, understanding the theory is good, but knowing how to do the work is a hundred times better. 
You got to be able to stick your hand in the mud, get dirty, but come out with something that is magnificent. This brain of yours is powerful and you got to put it to work. Cisco has laid out where you can choose your career. You got to get the verbiage together or the vocabulary. You got to learn the technology. If you cannot configure a routing switch without touching it, I mean, literally talk it up. Yeah, come on guys, doing a lab is cool, but you should be able to say, oh, this is what I need to do. This is what, and that's without even touching a router and switch. And then get prepared for your exam. Guess what? All the work you're doing right now in the classroom won't even compare to what you have to do to get ready for the exam. Those are two separate entities. A lot of people think when they go to the class, they're going to study the class and then they're going to go take the exam. Well, they're going to take the exam and they fail. The class prepare you for learning how to work with the devices and learn the verbiage, the vocabulary that you need to know in the industry. Studying from the certification is an entirely different thing. You have to get prepped and ready for the cert. And then update your resume with this information. So if I chose cyber ops, in cyber ops, this is where I would go. It will take me here. It also tells me the jobs that I should look at. I told the student, I said, listen, every week, go online and look at the different cyber ops jobs. You know what the student told me? Well, I haven't completed the class. I haven't even started class. No, no, no. You want to put your mind in the frame or the thinking of I'm getting prepared to go do this work. So you need to know the questions that they're gonna ask on these job descriptions so you can make sure that's the information you get you in the class. So three of the most key, three of the most key positions out there is Security Operations Center, uh, uh, what we call a SOC, analyst, uh, Cyber Security Engineer, IT Security Operations Specialist. Most of you will get the IT Security Operations Specialist and the security operation analyst because you'll be working in a SOC. The, uh, but engineer, you have to step your game up. That means you know networking really good. You CCNA certified and possibly CCNP certified. Um, you know a lot of different things. And it lays out here the basic terminology of what you need to know to get into this. So Cisco has prepared this for you and I'm sharing it with you so you will know exactly what you have to do to get into it. So my question to you is this, are you prepared to go in this industry or are you just a person who just taking a bunch of classes just to take a class and to get a degree? Or are you a person sitting at home just studying stuff just to be studying? It has to be a purpose. It has to be a meaning. And if you really going to be in this industry, you really have to put in the time. Some of my students will hear me say the, the, the words level up and lab up, meaning put in the time, turn the TV off, stop going out dating with the girl. I know you've got a girlfriend, you want to go do that, slow it down. Put in the time, put in the hours. I said this to a student. I said, if you don't wake up in the morning and you don't do a lab, or in that day you don't do a lab, you actually behind. Because somebody's out there waking up, doing a lab, putting in the time, day in, day out, because they know where they want to go. And that's why they doing it. Because they want to be the best at what they do. And nothing's wrong with that. So every day, Set a stack of labs on your desk and just pull one out and just study it. If you're in the class, get your work done, but do some extra. Say, hey, professor, I did this extra lab. Can you take a look at it and tell me what you think? You know, it's hard becoming the best. It is hard to be the best, but you have to do it. So. My question to you, and I'm going to put this out there, and I'm going to stop this video because I know you're going to say, Professor Fessler, he done got on one of them soapboxes again. One, if you want to be the best in this industry, you have to study a 
Okay, you're already saying, I know that, Professor. Okay, now let me tell you what I mean by studying. Grab a few hours out of your day. Start out with one, start out with three. But these hours should be every day, not just one day, not a half a day, every day. And stick by that for a month, for 30 days. If you say for an hour, I'm going to do a lab. And I'm talking about outside of your classroom work. I'm not talking about your classroom work. I'm talking about this is something that you're doing on the side to be that special person who's going to be the very best that you can be. Okay? So outside of your work, start with that. Pick an hour or two or three, okay? And say, I'm gonna do this work. That's extra now. So let me give you points on what you can do to become the very best in this field. The first thing is this, and we're talking outside of your courses, outside of your job, if you're working in the industry, we talk about outside of all of that. This is the extra stuff that gets you to the highest level. First step. Pick a few hours out of the day that you will do extra work, meaning extra labs, to tune in on your skill, to become really, really good in your skill. And when you pick those hours, make sure you can do those hours every day at the same time. Don't willy-nilly the hours. I'm going to do it at 9 o'clock, then 10 o'clock, and all that. The same time every day. Make it a repetitive motion, a repetitive action, the same time for seven days a week. Just do that. Watch how really good you get in this industry. You're going to be like, wow, I know that. So do that, okay? Now, it can be two hours, it can be three hours, it can be five hours, but whatever hours you choose, stick with it. The second thing after a good 30 days of consistently doing it and making it a habit, any up your hours. That means if you're doing one hour, do two. If you're doing two, do three. If you're doing three, well, you get the point. Any up the hours. That's the second key there. Okay? Now, the third thing is this, and this is most important. Study the lab so you can memorize it. So I told a student this before, do the lab once, do it twice, then flip the paper over and just look at the title of the lab and do it and see if you can do all the steps. Do it so it becomes intertwined in your soul. I know people gonna say that's a little bit deep, Professor, but that's what you wanna do. You wanna get so skilled up that when someone asks you a question, you automatically know what they're talking about and you can assist them. Okay, now the last and most important thing is to do two things in this last one. One, make sure you know your job path. Pick a plan, decide what certifications you're gonna do and follow it. And that with that, Go on the internet weekly and look at all the jobs in this field. If you don't look at the jobs, you can't answer the questions because you may see something in the job description and say to yourself, hmm, I don't think I'm studying that in class. And then you can go look it up. One of the things I would always do, and I'm gonna give y'all a hack tip. Some of you students already know it because I told you this. I would see on the job description something that I knew we weren't learning in class I would ask the professor, hey, they talking about this. Oh, that's a proprietary thing that they're doing in the industry. I would contact research and contact that organization and ask them, could they send me a copy of it so I can practice with it? And I got really good at that. So when I went out and spoke about things in the industry, looking for a job, they say, oh, he already know this proprietary application. Yes, let's bring him in. You see? You have to do those things. Okay, I'm gonna keep this video short.